When you guys are 45 years old, do you want to have to go to your boss to have to request a day off in order to take your family to Disneyland? Or do you want to be able to go to Disneyland with your family, not worry about how overpriced everything is, have a great time, and all the while still be making money? <laughs> I see so many mistakes when people are starting to do their investments and when they're figuring out what it is that they're going to invest in. And so I wanted to make a video for you guys so that you guys don't go through that same problem. And today's just a special day anyways because Eminem just opened up his restaurant called Mom Spaghetti in Detroit. He's vomit on his sweater already. Mom Spaghetti, he's nervous. And that's pretty awesome. Hey everyone, my name's Nolan. My students call me Professor G, and it is my passion helping young people understand personal finance and the ins and outs of starting a business. Let's do this. It's been weighing on my heart the fact that people are just making such big mistakes in investing. Investing should add to your life, it shouldn't take away from it. So I wanted to give you guys a couple mistakes that I see and how we can make sure you don't fall into the same trap. But the biggest mistake that you can make today is not liking this video. Come on, man. So as soon as you fix that mistake, we can move on to number one. I do have a list of five big mistakes that I see, but these are in no particular order. So first and foremost, this is one that I just feel like I shouldn't even have to say, and that is picking investments that you don't understand. <laughs> Why are you putting money into something that you don't understand? If you don't understand how to speak Chinese and someone says this movie is a great movie but they speak Chinese, if you go to watch that movie you may think that it has pretty colors and that the people are cool but you have no idea what they're saying because you don't speak Chinese. Same exact thing here. If Chad comes to you and says, this energy stock is gonna go to the moon, bro, and you know literally nothing about energy, nothing about how any of this works, you might as well just go to Vegas, throw it all on black, and hopefully 50-50, or a little bit less than 50-50, that you're gonna at least double your money. Most of the time, though, you're just gonna lose the money. Same thing happens in the stock market, except for it's a little bit slower of a slide. So, just like I say in just about every video, and definitely in every class, do your research. You don't have to be an expert in everything. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to take part in everything. I'm totally fine with like five to ten other investments that I deeply understand. So the way that you can understand things would be, first of all, just a simple Google search. Try to look up who the CEO is, look up what type of processes they have, look up the management team, look up things that they've promised in the past, and then look to see if they've made good on that promise. It's also good to look at their competitor because you wanna see if any of the competition is taking over some of that competitive advantage. We live in the age of information and data. So just look it up, it's all at your fingertips. You're already doing the smartest thing you can do by watching this video, so good job there. So the next mistake that I see is people trying to time the market. And now I know I'm talking to a lot of beginners as far as investing, and with my beginners, I always recommend starting with like the S&P 500 or the total stock market index, some type of index fund that has a broad range of companies and that consistently makes about 10 to 12% on average per year. Just because the price seems high today, you should now understand that at some point, like 10 years ago, the price probably seemed high. And then five years after that, the price seemed high. The thing is, is that it keeps going up. That's what consistently growing by 10 to 12% will do. Psychologically though, if somebody buys in at say $400, then it goes up to 405 and then maybe 450, then in their mind, they're thinking, well, I bought most of this at 400. If I buy it at 450, that just seems so overpriced. I'm just gonna wait for it to go down. The problem is historically, it just keeps going up. So then it hits 470, then 490, and now all that time that you could have been investing a little bit each month or something now you have to put it all in because you're like oh I guess it just does keep going up and so now I need to put it in at 490 and you lost money now real quick before I get the keyboard warriors that tell me that stocks don't just always go up that is hundred percent true there are times when it dip and there's always the risk that the stock market could just totally drop or that a stock could totally drop what I'm talking about here is the consistency of 
love the S&P 500 specifically because that one's my favorite index fund. And that over time has had a consistent 11% growth. Just remember that there are people whose full-time job is to figure out the market, figure out when companies are going to be lower than expected or higher than expected. And for some reason, they keep getting it wrong. There's a stat out there that says that 95% of traders get beat by the S&P 500 all the time. So us regular people who are not professional traders can beat professional traders by just putting money into the S&P 500. It's not about timing the market, it's about time in the market. And what that just means is you need to put the money in and it needs to just sit. The more amount of time that it's in the market, the more money you're going to make long term. The next mistake that I see a lot of people end up doing is called emotional selling. And now any of you that are actually invested in the stock market understand that there are times when it's up and there are times when it's down and when it's down it does take a little bit of your soul I don't know how many times we've woken up to the stock market has never tumbled this far before 2.1% all tech stocks are going out of business. You've got to remember that it's the media's job to elicit some type of response. That's why the news is always bad. Don't make the mistake of emotionally selling. You can only lose money if you sell. If the stock goes down $100 and you sell it, you just lost $100. If it goes down $100 and then the next day goes up $200, now you're up $100. And that's what always happens. If you look at any charts, it's never just a perfect straight line up. It kind of goes like this. And so you have to weather those storms in order to get to the next level. The next mistake that I see people do is they put all of their eggs into one basket. And I'm not just talking about stock, but we can start there. So as far as stocks are concerned, maybe somebody just like loves Facebook. If you were to put all of your money into Facebook because they have been growing and because it's a consistently good buy for now, like what if something cooler than Facebook comes around and people just kick that to the curb? Just ask Tom from MySpace. You definitely want to invest in diversified types of investments. You don't want all of them to be like technology. You may want some of them to be like Walmart or Home Depot or something like that where people need to buy these goods all the time. So that if the tech sector does fall for some reason, you're going to be okay because it's not like everything's going to fall at the same time. There's just so many different industries and it's just a good idea to have a little piece of each one. That's why I always suggest the S&P 500. I feel like like the S&P 500 should give me a commission for how often I talk about it. In the S&P 500, it's basically 500 different top level companies in the United States, and they're all in different sectors and different industries. So now the other piece of diversification though is that you don't also want it to just be stock. You want to also put your money and investments into other things. That's why I started diving pretty deep into cryptocurrency because it is different. It's solving problems different than the way that traditional companies solve problems. Now, as far as risk is concerned, cryptocurrencies are much higher risk than stocks. And then index funds are very, very low on the risk. Other types of things that you can invest in would be real estate, which I love real estate. I think that that's one of the best investments that you can do. It's just usually a pretty high upfront cost. There's also investments in commodities like gold and gas and oil and things like that. Another asset class would be things like shoes. The shoe market these days is hot y'all. People are buying $300, $400 pair of sneakers and they're flipping them for like 1200 bucks. When did shoes get so expensive? Who's buying these shoes? Now, the last mistake that I want to talk about today is not putting enough money into the investment. If the idea here is to build your retirement savings or just make your money work for you because compound interest is going to be the biggest driver in how you can actually build real wealth, then you need to actually put some fuel in there. Whatever that looks like for you, just make it a consistent amount every month. So if you're making, so no matter what you're making, a good rule of thumb would be at least 10% of your income going into some type of an account that's going to earn compound interest. Along these lines is kind of like a bonus mistake that I hear all the time, and especially because I work with students, college students, and so a lot of them tell me, well, I only have like $50. I'm gonna wait till I have enough money to get started. That's a lie. As soon as you can, just put the money in. Take that little $50 or whatever it is and throw it in. You can start with anything nowadays 
there's not minimums unless you're going into some type of like a mutual fund or something. Some of those have a minimum. For most brokerage accounts now or retirement accounts or anything, you can start with as little amount as you'd like. Just get something in there because I promise once you start to see that compounding effect, you're going to want to keep going and you're going to wish that you had started earlier. So now that you know these mistakes, you're going to go ahead and not do these mistakes and you're going to be well on your way for your investments and it's going to be awesome. And you're going to look back five years from now and you're going to say, wow, I'm so glad that I subscribed to Professor G's channel. Awesome.